Well, we need to have a discussion about the overall format. And if you guys give me some likes, next week, starting on Monday, we're going to go through and we're going to redo, tear up our predictions that we had for YCS Chicago for the metagame. And we'll probably rip that out, make that another video series all next week for you guys. So if you guys want that to happen, if you guys want part one on Monday, technically we already did part one, but there's more things I want to add to that. So if you guys want to see that, give me some likes. But I do want to talk about the overall structure of the format for this video, because I do think that is important. So let's dig on into this discussion, shall we? All right, so if you're going to be playing the game of Yu-Gi-Oh for the next couple of weeks, there's a few things that you need to understand generically about the structure of the format. And the first one is got to do with the danger. So everybody currently, in terms of deck building, if you are playing a combo-based deck, you are looking to the danger engine as a means to progressively speed, speed, through your deck. Um, and I've already read a few comments from people like, I don't understand how the danger engine is so consistent. These people are using this as a means to further through the deck. You've got popular cards like Saruja that have become troublesome issues in within their own. Right, but the danger engine is speeding these decks up to a kind of unfair pace. Now, it's it's a sad day when I kind of look at Sky Strikers and I'm like, you know, Sky Strikers is kind of fair compared to what Danger Thunder can actually do. You know, these decks that are producing these large amounts of negates, and it's because the Danger Engine is allowing them to go through their deck at such a high pace and getting these resources, which, it's not a bad thing. Don't get me wrong. I, I do love and hate the Dangers. Uh, it's just I progressively think at this stage in the game Producing the danger cards was a mistake. Now it's kind of funny because people were talking about discard pings and things, discarding cards from your opponent's hand. It's kind of funny because the dangers are kind of a counter to themselves, almost kind of like Dark World was a counter to itself in its time. But I also kind of think we're also experiencing a BA effect with this deck right now. Like the deck is going to be good, but eventually, you know, we'll start to see these engines get checked a little bit. So give it time. Yes, I'm frustrated with dangers like a lot of you are, but. For the current point in time, the best decks, the most degenerate ones, are looking to abuse the danger cards. As not, it's it's because they're a resource, and resources are great. Now, the next thing, in terms of the format's design, the guard dragons had a fantastically huge impact on the development of this format. And if, there was a lot in Savage Strike. Don't get me wrong, there were a lot of little things that pushed the format. A lot of people didn't think that Savage Strike was going to be that much of a defining set, but it was defining in the the fact that it gave decks more degeneracy. Um, and it's kind of funny, because in general, the Guard Dragons, they, they produce Hot Red Dragon Archfiend the best. That's what they want to do. But when you look at their job in Crusadia, you're kind of like, oh, hey, like, I put some negates on the board, you know, Agrapane brings out cool stuff, you know, Boral Savage Dragon equip with onboard negation. Yeah, that's absolutely great, but, uh -huh, yeah. The Guard Dragons, they, they're doing a couple things. You've got the negate builds, and then you've got them being used in Crusadia. Now, it's kind of a shame because Crusadia really... Crusadia kind of got thrown under the bus here. Like, everybody was excited about Crusadia, and then it was kind of like come event time, and it was like, oh, everybody's actually just playing this in Thunder Dragons. You know, Wyvern Buster to produce these cards. Everyone's kind of like, oh, that's that's better. But the Guard Dragons, they've done a lot for the format. Um, if you're planning on playing, yes. Be aware that decks are abusing these. If you see a level 4 dragon come on the field and you see Wyvern Buster or something, yeah, be aware that you've probably got some sort of degeneracy around the corner, and that degeneracy is probably going to lead into more things. So, kind of a uh, a very strange aspect um, for the current format. So, thank you, Guard Dragons. I like how you've changed the format. Now, next up, we need to talk about going second. Now, this is crazy. Because everybody thought this format was going to be a going first format. Now, I'll talk about going first after this. But a lot of decks, Sky Strikers are leaning towards wanting to go second. And there's still the age old debate for the format between Sky Strikers. But a lot of builds are like, I can go second, I can use evenly matched 
and I can clear your board. Now this was something that we've seen Calvin Tahan doing all weekend. Opting for second, open up evenly matched, you clear your opponent's board, you're good to go, right? You, you can engage and play the game. I think this is an extremity um, because you have we have to rely on such a broken card to allow us to functionally play the game. And I think now with the ceiling having risen uh, for the power, like currently what we had last format is here and we're all the way up here now. So having to rely on degenerate cards to allow us to play the game isn't necessarily a bad thing. But I do think because of the way that things are going right now, going second has become way more viable. Now the bad news is going second decks that truly light and wanted to go second. Mech Knights, sorry guys, you're you're a little bit more power corrupt than I had actually anticipated. Like I, I anticipated that you guys might be able to still top, but like there if Altergeist kinda started getting power corrupt, man uh, Altergeist gotta be here, like Mech Knight gotta be all the way down here at this point. That is crazy to me as a player to think that. But yes, going second is very viable this format because of evenly matched. It's kind of crazy actually. But I mean, when boards can put multiple negates on the field, like, what are you really worried about? You know what I mean? It, call it what it is. Now, let's talk about going first. Mm hmm, mm hmm. And. What are some of the consequences to this? Going first right now leads you into Azathoth and Kali King Yuga plays. Now this is an extremity, once again. You've got these decks that can also put multiple negates on the board. There's a lot going on for these decks that want to go first. So the Thunder Dragon Chaos deck was putting Hope Harbinger, Colossus, uh, Hot Red Dragon, Archfiend on the field, and that was their going first board. And then, you know, you have to play through multiple negates, like, it's, it's a real shit-filled time if you're somebody trying to combat that. But, like, going second, you, you can actually do that with the help of Evenly, but you've still got to play through multiple negates. And, of course, on the flip side, you've got decks that are abusing Azathoth right now. Um, rank up magic, broken bullshit. Um, ranking up on the opponent's turn during the main phase. Now, I heard the way that people were working to beat this was you would just go main phase. Um, you maintain your player priority to do the first action, I believe, and then you distribute over their target, which I believe actually works. Um, because um, once upon entering the main phase, you do maintain the first action. So, yeah, that is correct. You can kaiju it. Um, actually, the other thing is a lot of people are going for sphere mode to counteract these going first plays. Which, I mean, okay, cool. Like, three monsters. Sphere mode's good. A uh, little bit less kaiju in the mains than I actually thought there were going to be. But for the most part, yeah, just be aware that, oh shit, going first as a thought decks, really a major issue in the current format. Like, it's kind of cool that we have both going first and going second decks being absolutely viable at this point. I didn't actually think that Yu-Gi-Oh! could kind of balance itself out a little bit, but it did it beautifully, actually. Now, the last thing I want to talk about here is I kind of want to talk about Altergeist. Now, if you're looking at this format and you're like, oh shit, like, I play Altergeist, what do I do? Just because your deck kind of took a backseat for the time being doesn't mean that we might not see it evolve. Now, the reason the deck did go is because it had a fantastic Sky Striker matchup. Secret Village is a hell of a card. Well, it is excellent. But the issue at this point, you now have to ask yourself, is is Secret Village the way to go? I do think that Altergeist have the potential to evolve with the format, you know? It was good to see the Guru Control was at the top tables and doing things. Um, I just think that Altergeist, I don't know if they just didn't have enough representation or what was going on there, but you had 10 Sky Strikers of 8 of them getting wiped out in top 32, going into top 16, 2 were left. That's kind of crazy to me, uh, kind of to see all of that kind of go on there. So I do think that give things progressive time for Altergeist players, and you will probably see the deck, I guess, overall evolve to kind of counteract the bullshit that is going on with Thunder Dragons and everything. So, I don't know uh, 
what other points there are to really add to that outside of yeah just because it didn't make top 32 doesn't mean that it's in a shit position in the current format just give things time let the players explore these options and let them kind of see what more they can actually do to kind of counteract the metagame outside of that it's it's my formal discussion for what's the state of the format I do think that the way that the format is going at the moment isn't a bad thing. I do think that give things time, let players evolve, and we'll probably see some things. This format does leave a bad taste in my mouth because of the danger cards and the abuse that they are facing in the current format, but you know, it doesn't mean that we can't let things evolve and go from there. So what do you guys think? Please comment down below, tell me what you guys think, and well guys, I'm out. Peace. The ride never, well, truly ends. Thank you, patrons. Without you guys, I don't know what I'd be wearing in these videos. I might be a truffle shuffle and all over again. Guys, please also check out Vancol40 for some awesome banger content. Some other interesting stuff you might find up here on the left or in the description as well. Thanks for watching.